A fighter jet reversal? Well, look, in an effort to replace the military's aging CF-18 fighters, this past week, the federal government announced it had launched negotiations to buy 88 of the F-35 fighter jets from Lockheed Martin for an estimated $19 billion. This comes after a liberal election promise from 2015 openly said, we will never buy that plane. It no longer makes sense, if it ever did, to have a stealth uh, first strike capacity fifth generation fighter. Now the Conservative government under Prime Minister Stephen Harper actually set out to buy 65 F-35s back in 2010. They were accused of underestimating the cost of construction and maintenance, including by the Auditor General. But why did it take years to buy the same jet that Canada intended to buy in the first place? Does this speak to a larger problem with military procurement? Let's find out. Joining me now is the Procurement Minister, Philomena Tassi. Minister, a pleasure to have you on the program. Look, uh, everyone's expecting defense spending to ramp up in the budget this coming Thursday, but this is a $19 billion procurement potentially. And in 2015, your party said, and Justin Trudeau said, I'll never buy the F-35. I can get a cheaper, better uh, plane through an open competition, a more affordable alternative. Seven years later, we're back around the military mulberry bush. What happened? Well, let me begin, Evan, by saying in 2016, we did make a commitment that we would purchase 88 fighter jets, and that's exactly uh, what we have, what we are on the process of, in the process of doing. Um, you know, the procurement started in 2017, but let me be very clear. We knew that if we had a rigorous process that was open and that was fair, that at the end of the day, we would get um, a competitive process where we would get the, be the best plane for the best price with the greatest economic uh, benefit to Canadians. So the process here is extremely important. Let's be candid. This is still controversial, and, and you know that, that it's controversial on price. Um, the U.S. is so concerned about the escalating price, uh, and I'll give you an example. The Government Accountability Office in the United States concluded that the sustainment costs over the life cycle of the plane has gone up by more, by, from $1.1 to $1.3 trillion just in the last year. They have what they call affordability concer uh, concerns. I'll, I'll just read you what they wrote. The service will be collectively confronted with tens of billions of dollars in sustainment costs that they project will be as unaffordable during the program. And, and, and you know that the chairman of the House Armed Services, uh, Adam Smith, was so concerned about cost overruns that he last year called this, the Pentagon was throwing money down a particular rat hole. Why are you so confident this is right when in the U.S. they're calling this a financial rat hole? Well, it, this is exactly why the process is so important. And that is because we are looking at all those costs so that as the evaluations are taking place, that you are looking at the life cycle costs and what that is going to entail. And so in this, uh, the finalization stage, which we are moving to now with Lockheed Martin, um, that those, those amounts are all going to be accounted for. I mean, it, it just adds to the argument that it is important that we go right. through these, this process so we don't repeat the mistakes that have been made in the past and not look at what exactly oh. it is going to cost okay. Canadians. So, okay, so I know that you're negotiating the contract, but Canadians have been waiting seven years for details. $19 billion for 88 planes. What does that, is that the cost from cradle to grave? Is that the sustainment cost? Is that the per unit cost? How much does each jet cost? How much will it cost over its life cycle? And, and is that all included in the 19 billion or not? Okay, so the 19 billion is what was set aside in, in our policy, strong, secure and engaged, which is our defense policy. That money was set aside for the acquisition and startup of these planes. Right. And so that's what that money is. You know, Evan, that I can't get into the details with respect to numbers because this isn't a done deal yet. We are in the midst of negotiations. And we expect that this is going to take probably seven months. Okay. Uh, so there a is a chance anyway. there is a chance that the nineteen billion, if if there is sustainment cost issues, cost overruns, which has been the feature, not the bug of this process, that we if there's nineteen billion dollars, is there a possibility we don't get eighty eight planes? No. The the idea is that we are procuring the eighty eight fighter jets and nineteen billion has been set aside in strong, secure and engaged as uh, the money that we would use to purchase these planes, and that would be acquisition and startup. So that includes training, it includes hangars, it includes project management. 
But as the pro as we are going through this process, the life cycle cost is also being considered as we make the decision moving forward. So we have our eyes wide open as to what this what the okay. total cost but, is. But do be. you know? Yeah. So is the is the per unit cost per plane? What is the per unit cost per plane within that 19 billion? What's the estimate right now? So, so I, as I've said to you before, Evan, we can't right. share those details. Like I, we are in the midst of a negotiation. But isn't the nego yes. But as I understand the MOU originally that I read it, we get Canada could get the plane at the exact same price as the U.S. Isn't that right? Well, Canada has built the capability into the plane that it wants, and we have to ensure that when we are negotiating, that we are getting the capability that DND has asked for with respect right. to these fighters. So it va so that's going to vary in terms of you know what exactly are the capabilities that we are looking for, mm -hmm. and that of course will have an impact on the cost. One of the criticisms of the original conservative plan to buy the F-35 was it did not have the typical requirement, and you know the procurement minister, you know that the manufacturer spend the equivalent value of a contract in Canada on what's called industrial benefits. Lockheed Martin had made Canadian companies bid against other countries. There is no guaranteed equal industrial benefits. Has that changed and what guaranteed industrial benefits, Minister, will Canada get for this 19 billion plus? So a couple things there. First, in the procurement process on the industrial benefits piece, any bidder that provided a contractual guarantee on industrial benefits got the full points that they could get in that regard. Um, the second point I would make is in this procurement, we are using one of the highest percentages in industrial benefits that have been used in defense procurement. It's 20%. And the third thing, the third point is that in these negotiations, industrial benefits must be proven. It's one of the things that is a part of the negotiations. Right. Okay, but that is that we a are being assured. I just want to, because I remember in the original memorandum of understanding that was first negotiated, there was no guaranteed. When we paid into the consortium, it allowed Canada to be one of the participants that could bid on manufacturing, but there was no guarantee. This was a huge issue for your party criticizing the conservatives. Are you saying that's changed now and there are guaranteed industrial benefits? At the end of the day, when this contract is signed, there will be guaranteed industrial benefits. Yes. There will be guaranteed. Uh, can you tell they, us? It's how, a part of I, it. It's okay, a part that's of a part. So that's yeah. a change in the contract. Yeah. Is there a minimum level, 20%, 30%? 20% was considered in the, in the um, evaluation stage. It was 60% on capability, 20% on cost, and 20% on industrial benefits. Okay, so 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 you're talking about close to four billion dollars. That uh, twenty percent of the nineteen billion is guaranteed industrial benefits. So, no, no. What I'm saying is that whatever the uh, agreement comes to, uh, the weighting that was used in terms of the evaluation process, twenty percent was uh, uh, the weighted criteria for the industrial benefits. But that that are supposedly guaranteed. Okay, I got to leave it there. Uh, really interesting. Always good to have the uh, Procurement Minister, Philomena Tassian, a big budget week coming up. Thank you. Thank you, Evan.